Yes, this is a uh, big veto override um, of an abortion law that we um, really spent a lot of time to carefully craft. Uh, brought in a lot of stakeholders and someone who's been a part of that work group all the way through. I'm very proud of the product that we have. Um, you have seen, and if you read through it, it's mainstream. I mean, it's, you know, choice for the first trimester and guardrails after. Those guardrails are rape and incest up to 20 weeks is what we have now. No reporting requirement to the police, uh, just to the doctor. And then 24 weeks for fatal fetal abnormalities. So that means if the baby will live uh, inside the womb, but maybe not outside the womb for a certain amount of time. So up to 24 weeks, which is an expansion of what we have now, which is a hard 20. And then to full term for the life of the mother. Um, these are very thoughtful exceptions that we spent a lot of time working on. Um, you'll hear sometimes and be mischaracterized as a ban. A ban means to not do anything. And yeah. I will tell you that there were people in our side of the aisle who want to ban it. There was someone who filed a law in the house to ban all abortion. This is not that. This is a pragmatic mainstream approach to a very, very difficult topic that has long held beliefs on both sides of the aisle. Well, one of my questions for you was going to be, do you see compromise in this situ in this topic situation? But it sounds like that's what, in your opinion, that's what this was, was a compromise from both sides. Well, I'll say a, a, a compromise on both sides within the Republican Party based on very thoughtful input from everyone. Um, so some of the pushback is that Democrats didn't have a seat at the table. Well, Democrats told us at the very beginning, or at least the Democrats who are elected to the General Assembly, told us in the very beginning that they will go no further than codifying Roe versus Wade. We knew that they filed a law for that, and that's where they said that's the that's the where they stopped. That's that was their uh, compromise, <laughs> and so it was to say no to everything. Um, so we knew that that wasn't going to be productive. But what we did do is we heard from OBGYNs who do uh, provide abortion care, and we have heard from uh, pro-life OBGYNs, and so a lot of this language is very um, intricate and detailed based on those stakeholders' inputs. For you, and you obviously don't have to answer this, but sure. for you, is this a legal issue or does it weigh more on a moral issue? Uh, I don't know that there's any difference anymore, to be honest with you. Um, and so, and not just in abortion, I'm going to say in almost every law that we pass, like a speeding law, <laughs> you know, I mean, there are people who die from accidents from folks who go too fast. So for me, it's moral not to speed. And um, I'm making light of a tough situation, but I do feel like that blends in everything. Um, we knew that this was going to be a state decision. We didn't have that choice. The Supreme Court made us choose. We had a 20 week fallback, but really that was antiquated. When you want to talk about those fatal fetal abnormalities, 20 weeks isn't long enough mm -hmm. because the, the testing doesn't come back in time to know if your baby's going to have one of those like life limiting situation. So the way North Carolina law was is if that came back and your baby was not going to live for a certain amount of time or whatever, it didn't matter. You were carrying that baby to term and delivering that baby. Now a woman has that freedom to make that choice between her and her doctor up to 24 weeks. That's a win. I mean, that's a win. That's an, that is actually an expansion of the North Carolina law. I've seen in other states that have gone too far. Um, and when I say too far, maybe I think that the life begins, at, but other people don't. And you have to be careful because when you have personal convictions, that doesn't mean that you can govern based on that, right? You need to look to see where people are at. And in North Carolina, it was clear. Most people, or 56% said guardrails after the second and third trimester, first trimester choice. And that's what you got very compromised, common sense piece of legislation.